My name is Frank Hohenberger, and I consider myself a Brown County, Indiana artist. I use a camera in film instead of paint and canvas, but I'm a charter member of one of the most important art colonies in all of America. Fine art in southern Indiana? Yep. As a matter of fact, art's played a key role in this community for over a hundred years. Why? Well, take a look at that view. People have been coming to look at that view and take in all the beauty that nature has graciously left behind for over a century. But not just everybody came to look, some came to capture it. They were the artists. I came to Brown County in 1917, <laughs> looking pretty dapper too. I was in my early 40s and I'd worked many jobs in print shops with newspapers and camera stores. I was busy developing other people's photographs. What I really wanted to do was leave the city and take my own pictures. I wanted to create my own brand of fine art. Somebody had brought in some negatives from a place called Brown County. I was intrigued. I left Indianapolis. I traveled south. I just had to see it for myself. <laughs> and I never went back. In many ways, it was a paradise. Big hills, big sky, big woods, and run-down buildings, bad roads with no running water. <laughs> but I also found the people. Folks who knew what it was like to live with nature. Dirt poor survival. It wasn't an easy life at all, but it was fascinating and I set out to capture it. I set up my own studio and I got to work. I explored every path, every hill and every holler. And I talked to everybody I met. It's a good thing too, because change was in the wind. Turns out I wasn't the only fellow drawn to Brown County. There were artists big time artists. They came from all over, Chicago, New York, St. Louis, and they had studied in Europe and fancied themselves a new generation of French style impressionists. In 1907, one of Indiana's most famous artists, T.C. Steele bought some property between Nashville and Bloomington. And there he built a home and a studio, and he called it House of the Singing Winds. He was nearing the end of his career, but his presence attracted the next generation of American artists to Brown County. Adolph Schultz and his wife Ada came from Wisconsin by way of the Art Institute in Chicago. They had the same attraction to the natural beauty and the rugged people that I did. It all made for great subject matter, but even better, Brown County was a short distance from several large cities where we could sell our work. They persuaded a number of their colleagues to move to Nashville to live. At first, getting here wasn't easy. We took the train south to Helmsburg and then walked seven miles to Nashville. Those with money took the buggies that met the train. We rented rooms at Pittman's Inn or in a boarding house or one of the many log cabins. And as I said, the roads were bad or non-existent. The artists carried their easels and their paints and I carried my cameras and equipment. They painted the hills and the valleys capturing the very light itself and I took pictures manipulating that light. They painted the people working in their gardens, feeding their animals, caring for their children. Their images were soft and lovely. I photographed the people as they lived. And my photographs were not always lovely but they sure were interesting. Some of the locals resented this strange invasion of these fancy artists and this nosy photographer. They often felt ridiculed or the object of curiosity. In a way they were, because my photographs began to sell. People across the country couldn't get enough of the horses and wagons, the basket makers, the rug weavers, and the moonshiners. The pictures led me to a second career as a writer. My column, In the Hills of Brown, ran for 30 years in the Indianapolis Star. The artists painted and I told the stories. I took some artistic license with those stories too. I enhanced what I heard at Gossipy Corner where the town pump was located and from the women milking cows on Milky Way. I also shared tales from the liar's bench, the drugstore and anywhere people gathered. I might change the names of the people but everybody knew who I was talking about. One woman told me it was bad enough to tell the truth about the place, let alone lie about it. The artist didn't always get much respect either. One farmer said he was watching Adolf Scholl's painting one day and it looked like plum ignorance. 
In 1926, the artist formed an association and established the Brown County Art Gallery. My friend Carl Graff became its first president. He spent his early years camping and painting and eventually he bought a house. By the 1930s, there were at least 35 artists like Will Vauder building homes and studios, living and working in Nashville. Others visited during the summer and joined the Art Association. And their work didn't go unnoticed either. Every year, the Brown County artists were featured in Chicago at the annual Hoosier Salon exhibition. Tourists from across the Midwest came to the shows at the Brown County Art Gallery, and many more came as students to study with association members. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt came to the gallery in 1934 and bought several paintings to take back to the White House. She stopped and posed for me as she left. And by the 1940s, Brown County was one of the most important regional art colonies in the country. Tourism had arrived and Brown County had changed. As for me, I could get some of the credit or the blame. I watched it all happen. I photographed it. I told stories of everything I saw. I spent the best years of my life in Brown County. And by the 1970s, all those early artists, they were dead, but their legacy is ongoing. They'd be pretty surprised to see the huge prices their work brings in these days. As for Nashville, it has become a major tourist destination with shops, restaurants, and charming places to stay. For nature lovers, there's a huge state park, forest preserves, and miles of hiking trails and country roads to explore. We have managed to welcome visitors and still maintain the peace and beauty that brought us here in the first place. Come to Brown County. I still travel these hills in spirit with my equipment, taking pictures. Maybe someday you'll meet me on a hilltop. Or maybe, like me, you'll come here to stay. <laughs>